Hello, Sivine here, and welcome to my review of SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical. Mm. Now, I was a bit cautious when they asked me to do SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical, because I don't like sponges. Like, they freak me out, like the texture of it. Oh, God, it's disgusting. Honestly, my sister, she used to, she used to terrorise me with sponges and put them in my mouth as a gag, and honestly, I, I hate the texture now. I couldn't do it, so I was a bit, I was a bit scared. I thought, I'll do it, but I'm not handing out sponges. And luckily they didn't ask me, so I did really enjoy it. So, we're going to start off by the set. Now, that set is absolutely gorgeous. You walk in and there's blue foil everywhere, honestly. It's like a bloody children's birthday party, but I loved it. It was great. And they had these mechanical things, like contraptions, I don't know, like some off mousetrap up the side. And in the middle of the show, these things... They start off and they start letting things go, like big balls blowing everywhere, honestly, it does not take me back. And the show, it was it was good, I've got to admit, I, I wasn't expecting much. When I heard about Spongebob the musical, I thought, really? Are you really going to make a musical out of that? Like, honestly, they're making musicals out of anything these days. You say it, and they've already made a musical about it. But Spongebob the musical, honestly fabulous. First of all, I'm going to go through a few songs and I'll tell you what I think. I know a little bit about them, alright? So the first one is Bikini Bottom Day. Now I didn't know Bikini Bottom was a joke because, you know, bikinis. So it's Spongebob. So we start it with Spongebob jumping out from this like cardboard thing. I thought it was a bit low budget to start with, but then this song just made it up. He's got the laugh down, spot on. See, the song's very upbeat, you've got to give it that, honestly. I wasn't expecting it. Alright, that's enough for that one. So that's Bikini Bottom Day, and that's how the show starts and introduces all the characters. And I didn't know this, but apparently all the songs are from different artists, like Cindy Lauper, David Bowie, and, you know, other people that also sing. And... It was a really good show, honestly. The characters, how they turns them from animation to actual online, uh, on, on stage creation characters was absolutely superb, honestly. They had it spot on. The voices, the singing, it just all worked. But the soundtrack, oh God, honestly. So what they've done is the soundtrack, they recorded it when it was, when it was workshopping in Chicago and it's a different cast and honestly, <gasps> Some of them are awful. And then you, you cut to Broadway and it's fantastic. So the plot about the show is about apocalypse. So the world's ending underwater. And I was a bit unsure of this, to be honest with you. Because it just seemed a bit, a bit easy. Like nothing really happened. It's like, oh, we're going to save the world. But then it's just weird, I tell you. And I, I had to remember, I had to, that it was actually a kid's show. So I was sitting there and going, well, this ain't no lame is. Where's, where's the relationships and everything? And honestly, Patrick and Spongebob, they did have a great relationship. They did. They did. But one relationship I did miss was with Squidward and Spongebob. I don't think they really worked on that that hard, honestly. It, it was a bit loose to me. Um, but yet the story was a bit naff, saving the world, I thought. God. And there were these great sequences on the set, honestly, where he's like, weaving in and out like a little bloody spider trying to save the world. But I just thought it was a bit anticlimactic, you know what I mean? What I feel like they did was just base it around the songs a little bit too much, you know what I mean? I feel like after David Bowie died, you can't really go back and say, hey, could you rewrite this song? You can't do it. And Cindy Lauper, she's all over that kinky boots, isn't she? So she's got better things to be doing. So it is a shame that it's not going to be on anymore, but I do feel like it would go on tour, but they'd have to scale down the set a bit more. And there's a fabulous number when Squidward uh, does a tap number, but he's got four bloody legs. Honestly, it doesn't have to look realistic. I don't know how they bloody do it. I don't know if someone's back to back with him and dancing at the same time or if they're fake or what, but it looks spectacular. So I was pleasantly surprised to be working at Spongebob and I did have a great time and the set was lovely, the cast were lovely, the crew were lovely but the theatre's right in the middle of the time bloody square. 
the Palace Theatre. Honestly, if you're in Times Square, that would be the first theatre you'd see, and it's a pain in the ass to get to. I tell you, I was running ten minutes there because there were these Japanese tourists blocking me freaking walkway. Honestly, all the tourists are pain in the ass. But SpongeBob is great. I loved it. It cost me eight quid for an ice cream though. Um, when I was on my break, I wasn't happy about that. No staff discount. Uh, but the show's really good. The music's really good. Don't judge it on a soundtrack because it's not the actual Broadway cast. But honestly, the Broadway cast was spectacular. I really enjoyed it. There's some great songs in it. Something about a sponge. Um, Hero is my middle name. Really good song, but I don't know if it's true. And also, you know, Who Lives in the Pineapple Under the Sea. SpongeBob SquarePants. That's in there. So you've got the classics in there. And you've got some new ones as well. It's really good. Um, the cast are great, as I said. And the set is fantastic. So if it does come around, go and watch it. But... Don't expect a heavy plot, okay? Thank you for watching. I've been Lucy Devine.